Do you also want to be able to log your temperature on your charger? Graphs like this one? If so, stay tuned and watch me show you how to do it. So basically before we start we do need a couple of things to do this modification. I do recommend that you have of course a charger handy. I'm going to modify this Opus BT3 C3100. Um, this charger if we take a closer look here that mark that is at that end is actually an internal temperature sensor for this unit. I have no clue how to get that data out or if it's presentable or not. But we are going to modify and add another temperature sensor down here. You also need a couple of screwdrivers, pliers. I do recommend a 7mm drill and a smaller 2 or 3mm to get the wires out. You need some kind of thin wires. I do recommend three colors. It's easier to know which <laughs> pin you're dealing with. You also need a couple of those. That's the temperature sensors. If you don't have them, you can find them quite cheap on eBay for roughly 1 euro or even below that. First, make sure to remove the four screws. Make sure when you are removing the screws to consider that those two in the middle there are smaller than everyone else. So don't mix them up together because they won't fit. There we have it. As I said before, our temperature sensors built in. So what we are going to do is add our own in those four spots there. It's pretty important that you keep them flush. Uh, make sure you don't tangle any wires up. When I'm drilling those, I'm using a 7 mm drill because that's big enough to fit the sensors. So this is basically the start of it. As you all may already have, you need a couple of batteries like this one as well. Because what I do is I add the battery like that, keep some weight in it, and the battery will pop up in that hole. And that will make it a little bit easier. Now it's time for the sensors itself. The sensors as we have here, as you can see they are flat on one of the sides you want to have that flat side to the battery itself, downwards at this. You need to bend the legs over. I do suggest that you are a little bit careful here when doing this. First one, I am bending almost all the way around. Make sure they don't touch each other. And the next one I do the same all the way around make sure the legs are spread a little bit like that the last ones we only bend upwards a little bit like that one more like so. It's now time to get the sensors mounted in place 
Now I did forgot to mention in the beginning that you need to have a heat a hot glue gun as well or something to glue them on with. And I do start with one that is bent over. And I place it like that. This is a little bit tricky because you need to keep this one firmly against uh, the battery. At the same time apply some hot glue to it. And it is crucial that the hot glue gun is actually hot. So you get it to come down into the gap. It's also worth mentioning that you don't have much space here and it will easily touch the electronics inside here. So you need to make sure you don't put too much hot glue on top of here so it moves around. When that's tight, you make sure to add some more glue on the other side as well. Uh, then it's time for the next one. Just make sure this is firm. You take the battery and move it to the next slot, like so. You take one of the opposite type of sensors that you bent. Do the same thing here. Apply some hot glue on the other side. You make sure to press it in place so it touches the battery. And you add more glue. And then it's just a matter of doing the same thing to the two last. And when everything is dry, make sure you remove every excess glue. It's important that you don't get any of the strings of glue on the contacts over here. Uh, because they need to be perfectly fine. So what you do now is that you take those and you press them down, like so. And this is the reason why I did it like I did, because you don't have to use as much cables or wires. Like that. Now it's time to bring up the soldering iron. Make sure you have a fine tip for this. Now they are connected like that, so we need some wiring now. So I'm cutting out three pieces that are roughly that length. And I will be using three different colors. So it's a little bit easier for me to make sure that I don't mix them. Uh, I do like to pre thin so I do it here as well even though this wire is very very good now it's a question of coloring the middle pin is the data pin and I tend to want to use for instance the white for that and I do want it on that side it's important that you don't mix them up or make them contacting each other because you will burn it out. Uh, the green I use for 5 volt power and the 5 volt power is the one to the left side if you place them the same as I did. Then we have the grey wire left, 
I consider that the negative. So basically what I do is I take, depending on what type of wires you have handy, in this case I, I'm using this one now. And now there's a neat little trick because we don't want them like this. Take one end, screw it together, take your drill, push it in, close, and then you just and you get a very neat wire like this. Cut one of the ends off. Let's see if we can get them correctly laid out, so like that. And now it's time to hook it up again. Last thing is to get the wire out of the case. I was thinking of adding some sign, sort of contact. You can add a contact in here, but I don't have that small ones. Pull this back over. Take your drill. And I'm going to get this wire underneath a little bit. And then we locate the hole. Push it out. And now it's time for some more hot glue. Hot glue is your best friend when it comes to this. And it's time to put it back together again. Uh, what to make note of is that this display is loose and can very easily come off. It's kind of nothing holding it. So you need to be very very careful with how it's positioned. When turning this back up again you can see that those wires for the temperature sensor there want to hang up a little bit. So just be careful when pushing it in. So they aren't in the way. You'll see it comes outside. You need to tuck it in a little bit. What will happen now is that those pins will most likely pop up. And that's because they will fit underneath on the, in the holes. So it's a matter of finding the hole again and push it back down. Aligning the card properly and then all the screws back. Don't forget the middle screws are smaller. And last but not least, the feathers here. It's time to add the back cover up. If it is that this display doesn't function properly, that's because you did misalign it. So you need to pick it apart again and move the display a little bit to the side. Before you close it I would though recommend that you turn it over and see that the sensors are aligned properly. It might even be that you have some glue left but just remove that if so. And when that, that's done you could add a connector on the back side. For instance you could use RG11 contacts. It's just a matter of gluing them there and you use the contact itself on a cable. Unfortunately I don't have an RG11 that fits. I have RG12 and the RG45 for network. Instead, as you can see, I used a quite a long cable so I'm going to hook this up to the Raspberry Pi. We have the drawing how to connect it to the Raspberry Pi. You, we are using an active connection, so we need to have a resistor in between the positive and the ground. Uh, the data pin is in the middle, as you can see. And it's pretty simple. 
and we will start doing this now. And after soldering those wires into place and forgot to turn on the camera, I'm going to add a sensor inside here as well. Uh, and that's basically because it's I want some extra measurement or be able to have some extra. And for those of you guys that aren't familiar with soldering that well, I would recommend do it on a breadboard or something instead. It's a little bit easier than connecting three connections at the same time. And this is basically the finished hardware product. The charger is connected to the Raspberry Pi. It's now time to take a look at the software itself. Uh, it's pretty simple and it's not that complicated. I'm going to show you guys two ways of displaying the data. So let's go a little bit into the software side then. First of all, I'm using Raspbian, uh, Debian based on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and I think there are, in this case, two different ways, as I said, the simple way and the more fancy way. The simple way is just a matter of using a simple script that fetches the number from the sensors and then add them to an HTML file that you yourself can update and watch. That's the simple way. I mean basics. The more fancy way that I do recommend if you are a guy like me that do want to see trends or graphs, I would recommend to go the way and use Graphite and Grafana. And uh, there is plenty of other choices like using RRD tool or anything else. But the fact that it, it's so damn simple today to actually install Grafana and Graphite I think you can do it as well. So basically, Grafana and Graphite is quite simple. I mean, what you do is that you take the values from the sensors and just ship them into Graphite and then you use Grafana to visualize them a little bit better than Graphite does. If you don't want to go that route with installing a lot of bunch of programs, I do recommend that you start with a simple layout, just fetch the values with my first script and present them as an HTML page. And basically if we take a look at the script here, basic loop that goes through, what it does, it, it goes through every uh, one wire sensor it can find and fetch the temperature and then sends it to a HTML file that you can watch. And the principle is almost the same in the one sending the data for Graphite and Grafana. Except for instead of an HTML file, it sends it to Grafana's, uh, Graphite's uh, database. And that concludes this video for now. Because the, the goal of this video was to show you guys how you could easily add a couple of temperature sensors to your Opus charger and get them monitored, either shown on a website or in very, very cool graphs. And I think I made that perfectly clear I hope at least so please look into my youtube channel and subscribe and comment if you like and also I will be linking below one link to the HP Powerwall website and one of the hopefully added um, posts of this thread and I will also be linking to one of my own pages that is newly built so stay tuned on that one on that link I will be having some more information on what I used. Uh, if you want to know anything, comment, subscribe, thank you and I'll see you next time.